Welcome to the 10th edition of the series where I attempt to gold every track of the day. Last time we took a look at the tracks from March of 2021 and rated the currently playing track Elysion by Karlberg by number one track. In today's video we will be taking a look at my attempts to gold the tracks in April of the same year. So how will I fare in April and which tracks will land in my top 5? Let's find out. And to start off the month, on April 1st, we have Lol Plinko V1 by Prince 10 b And last month, we were wondering if the Lol maps have started, but uh, this one is way more Lol than anything we have experienced. So maybe it started here. I have no idea. Uh, one thing I do want to note is that uh, I did replay this a couple times. I would have got gold on my first attempt, but I started, or decided to restart to just get the author medal, which was fairly easy here as I got it on my, what, third or fourth attempt here. So yeah, a uh, nice easy lull map to start us off. On April 2nd, we have MTC Dawn Forest by Yorsh Mia Veloche. Uh, decent track here, nothing to really write home about. Few drifts, uh, a bunch of grass sections, really nothing too special about this. Drove over, over all that uh, penalty grass section there, but then we got a grass loop, which you don't really see too often. Uh, only other section that was a little weird, there was like an ice turn coming up with a booster. Which was strange, but it actually worked out decently well, so I can't really complain about it too much. Uh, the only thing else about this track, the ending was a bit challenging here, so you gotta jump to the right-hand side here without hitting anything. So yeah, a bit challenging on the end, but overall, decent track. On April 3rd, we have Pleocreism by Vixa.wp. A pretty challenging track here. Uh, there are a couple bobsled sections which are pretty slow and probably made the gold a little bit harder with the ice updates. Uh, but a few sections in this one I also didn't really care for, which will be coming up a little bit later. But uh, again, a pretty challenging one here. So uh, if you're following along, this is one to look out for. This line right here I'm about to take is awful. Do not take that line. I'm not sure how I got gold with that. But that was truly terrible. But right here is the hardest section off that bobsled onto the dirt with a booster. Very, very challenging. I hit so many times there. You have a very small window to make it. So, yeah, that was probably the uh, most challenging part of the track. And then uh, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, we'll have a, a big jump down and then a big jump to the finish. But again, a pretty challenging one here. On April 4th, we have Ridge by Phil42, and this is a pretty good ice track, uh, just missing out on the top five, I'd say, and really, it's not even the track's fault that it misses out on the top five, it's really the recent ice update that rolled out in October of 2022 that really uh, brought it down in some rating. Uh, I will manage to get gold here, and the gold is pretty forgiving, it's just the track itself it's just not as good as it otherwise would be without the update. So again, I mean, the, the track itself is pretty good, but I can't in good conscience give it a high rating based on things that are kind of outside of its own control. So that's a bit unfortunate, but it is a good ice track and you should be able to get gold on it still. Uh, but uh, yeah, just a unfortunate one for uh, this track. For April 5th, we have Inwards by Adra Lanter, and it comes in with the 5th place rating. Uh, the track is nothing super spectacular. This month was super hard to rate. There were no like really, really good standout tracks besides maybe one or two. Uh, but yeah, this one is lucky enough to get the 5th place rating. It was just a good mixed track with dirt, grass, and road with some tech slides in here as well. Uh, just overall smooth flowing and uh, yeah, just a pretty good track. You'll see me switch cams here as getting in this in cam one was rather difficult. So switch to the closer view made it a little bit easier. But again, pretty good track here. On April 6th, we have Evolving Minds by Nova Terrorsh. And this track was kind of just strange to say the least. We got the enclosed walls, but they are a bit wider than normal. Uh, but then we got some drifts in here and then these wall right sections 
were particularly weird not really sure how to take them great they were sort of magnetic especially the last one was very very weird uh so i don't really know what to think about it um just not great yeah the last one it, it kind of just threw the whole vibe of the track off so you have to go like super hard right while the wall is kind of pulling you super hard to the left i i don't know what's up with this a weird magnet spot there but uh Find out for yourself, it's just an alright track. On April 7th, we have Escape Velocity by Sparkling W. And this one probably comes in maybe in the top 10 spots. Uh, but again, this month, really just decent tracks all around, but nothing to stand out-ish. So it was uh, pretty difficult to rate again. Uh, yeah, but just a decent track here, smooth flowing interesting unique sections the track is kind of just uh, straight a little left right here and there but overall kind of just uh, a straightish track so definitely something different than usual uh but again just a decent track here On April 8th, we have our second place finisher, Tempest, by Ripfish. Pretty good track here, obviously, with the uh, second place rating. Uh, we got uh, Grass and Road with uh, very good transitions between each. You get the slide-offs on the grass onto the road, setting you up perfectly for the next turn. Uh, really, the whole track just felt overall very smooth and uh, just a joy to play. I love the uh, faster pace of it as well compared to a lot of the other tracks this month. Uh, but again, just a uh, pretty good track overall here. On April 9th, we have a track by Priez, and of course, if it's by Priez, it is probably a NASCAR track like this one. We got Ocean NASCAR here. Uh, it took me a while to get this one, probably should have had it a lot sooner than I did, but I kept screwing up at the very end, which was rather annoying. Uh, so you could probably get this one much faster than I did. Uh, but man, NASCAR tracks, I don't want to say, like, I never want to see them again. Because maybe I will in the future, but uh, I just do not care to play the NASCAR tracks. Every time I play them, I, I just find them so boring. It's no offense to whoever creates them, whoever likes them. They're just really not my style, especially like super long ones like this. A minute 30 of just full speed, let go a little bit here and there. There's really just not a lot to them that I particularly find enjoyable. So uh, just another NASCAR track here. On April 10th, we have NAC Good Enough by Ibo. Uh, this was just an all right track. The beginning section was probably the most interesting. Like the whole latter half of this is almost kind of just like straight grass and dirt. So, I mean, really not much to say about this one. Once I get to the grass and dirt, I'm just attempting to speed slide a bunch. And that's basically the entire track. Uh, you'll see what I mean once we get through this little road section here. Uh, right after it, that's where it just all starts. It's probably like 20 seconds straight of just kind of holding uh, left or right a little bit and doing speed wiggles. So really, there's not much to the end of this track. Just speed wiggle and uh, hold right. There is this little bit of a wall ride slash loop thing here, but that's about all the action you're going to get. For April 11th, we have Lay Pick by Yorshmi Veloche. 
Uh, weird start to this one. We got this ice that goes around here. And then out of that, we'll have this uh, jump down. And then we'll get into a bobsled here very shortly. Which again, of course, the ice update. All this feels pretty slow. And it is slow. It doesn't just feel that way. Uh, but I had one issue with this track is that the finish just uh, didn't work a couple times for me. I would get to the end, drive through the finish, and it would just not register. I went back in the videos to look. I did hit all the checkpoints because the checkpoint counter at the bottom said 5 out of 5, but I would drive through the finish and just not get it. But luckily, managed to get it here. For April 12th, we have MTC Cavern by Mikey, and it comes in with the 4th place rating this month. A very good transitional multi-surface track with uh, dirt and road. Uh, but yeah, again, just flowed extremely well. Outside of uh, one turn that'll be coming up pretty short here. I, I don't really care when people have like downward boosters and then have you turn up a hill and over a corner like this. It just feels extremely weird to do. So that's really the only knock against the track. Otherwise, the rest of it is uh, pretty darn good. I'll take this jump very weird because I haven't seen it yet, but uh, yeah, just a, a nice track here. The end is also a bit uh, more difficult than you would expect. The uh, jump into the uh, risky finish uh, is an awkward angle, but it's not terrible. On April 13th, we have Dirt Care by Evo DC, and as the title would suggest, this is mostly dirt. Uh, strange start here on this turn right here. It's very hard to get through that section without hitting either penalty sand. Uh, and then right here, you hardly have enough speed to ever make it over that road section, so you like do this double hop. Um, overall, the track felt rather weird and the lines just didn't work all that great with the speed you had because a lot of times the turns you just felt way too fast for so you would have to slow down or turn very hard to get a line through it without sliding up into a wall so overall I really did not care for this track. And on April 14th, we have Myrtile by Slow PO. This track was just okay in my opinion. Goes for most of the tracks this month. A few drifts really felt very strange on this one. They just come out of absolutely nowhere, just kind of blind ones. Uh, and you have to react super fast to them as they're, again, not a ton of lead up time to them. Like example, this one here, very sudden, very fast, like 90 degree turn. Again here, a 180 that just felt strange. Uh, again, just uh, another track here that uh, just wasn't my favorite. On April 15th, we have Suburbia 2 by H Tim H. And man, this track looks great, but it plays pretty bad due to hardly any indication on where you're supposed to be driving. Uh, it's kind of all right in this beginning section. It's pretty obvious where you're supposed to go, but right here, this uh, blocks kind of points you up into the general right. I, I at first had no idea what I was doing. And then once you get up here again, this one's kind of obvious where you're supposed to go in this loop. But after this loop, it's kind of, again, blind. You're kind of just guessing, oh, I guess I have to go in this other loop. But it's so ambiguous. And then it, it gets especially bad once you get outside this room. You, there's just hardly any indication. You got some blocks randomly thrown about with arrows pointing you in a general direction. But overall, you really just have no idea where you're driving until you find the route yourself, which was pretty darn annoying to say the least. So... Unfortunately, one of the least favorite maps made by HTMH from me. On April 16th, we have Vertigo 2 or Vertigo Squared. I'm not sure how they want this one. I do know that there was a Vertigo track a while ago, 
made by Madu, of course. Um, very weird drifts here. I, I don't care. The uphill drifts, and then especially when we get later on here, we'll have this booster and going uphill boost. Yeah, just strange feeling. I, I just don't care for the feeling of driving uphill drifts, uphill boosts, corners. Uh, they just feel very weird. Just not my style. The track itself is okay, but again, due to the previous stated reasons, uh, just not my favorite here. Doing a little something different here for April 17th. We have Graveyard by Knives. Gonna play this in slow-mo for the beginning and then freeze it. I just want to point out that immediately at the start, on top of being minus 60 at speed behind due to this bounce block update, we're also 0.7 seconds behind immediately. And by the first checkpoint, that means we're already 1.3 seconds behind. So you're at a severe disadvantage due to the update to this block on this track. I'm not sure author time is possible on here anymore. Gold is definitely possible as I'll get it, but you are again at a severe disadvantage to start off this track. So again here, April 17th, Graveyard by Knives, this will be the full playthrough, it gets the honorable mention. I would love to give this one a top 5 spot, I, I just can't in good conscience do that with how severe disadvantage you are at the start on this one. Uh, but yeah, honorable mention because of that. Uh, you know, the, the speed you're behind at the start immediately, plus you're already further behind. I mean, at the end of the track, you're probably already... I don't know, at least minus two seconds, if not more than that, just because of the speed buildup at the start. It's such an insane disadvantage. You really have to be super perfect just to get gold here. And again, I do not think the author is probably possible on this one any longer. On April 18th, we have Desolate Dirt by Butella Morello. Uh, pretty basic track here. There's a, a little bit of dirt sections, but uh, a lot of road sections as well. There's maybe one or two drifts in here that you're supposed to hit. But overall, the track itself is pretty lackluster, pretty boring, to put it lightly, I suppose. I don't know if that's even lightly. It seems pretty harsh, but... Uh, it's just a, a fairly boring track, to be completely honest with you. For April 19th, we have Deep Winter by AQLX. A uh, very challenging tech track here. A lot of the turns, if not... All of the turns are kind of blind on the exit, so you really need to play this one a lot to learn everything about it. Uh, because, yeah, if you don't know where you're supposed to let go of the drift, you're just going to be constantly crashing into the walls. Which is why this track took me about 17 minutes to beat. One of the longer and tougher tracks of the month for sure. So if you're following along, playing along, just be aware that this one could be a challenge for you if you're not great at uh, tech tracks. On April 20th, we have Heareth by Mimic TM, and uh, this is a kind of a tech track, but it, it's got the dirt, so it automatically slides you into some of these turns. Then we got this little looping section at the start. Overall, I thought it was a, a pretty nice track. It flowed pretty well. Uh, just missing out on a top five spot, though. The uh, non-camera change in the starting little loop kind of threw me off, and that's basically the only reason why I didn't put it in the top five. It's not even that big of a thing, but uh, again, like I said earlier, that this month is kind of not all that great, so even the smallest little thing for a track could put it off the top five spots. For April 21st, we have Four Seasons Evolution by Bart Simpson 94. This is a full speed track and honestly a very challenging full speed track despite the time it took me to beat this. It seems almost necessary that you have to speed slide 
like a lot of these turns in order to get gold i'm gonna just barely get the gold on this one even with the speed slides i got so yeah i'm pretty sure it's just necessary to get the speed slides it's kind of crazy i've never seen really a full speed track that requires the speed slides especially a track of the day track that needs speed slides just to get the gold medal but uh, here you are it's a pretty challenging one without them And on April 22nd, we have Sunrays by Naysiro or Hitchy. I am not sure what this person wants to be called. Uh, on Trackmania itself, they're Naysiro, but on Trackmania Exchange, it's Hitchy. So I don't really know. Even the Trackmania Twitter account had him as Hitchy. So yeah, I really don't know about uh, what this person wants to be called. But uh, anyways, this uh, track here is a transitional tech track. It's got a fairly easy gold medal. Even uh, the previous run I had before getting gold here, I crashed and almost got the gold medal. I missed it by like a second. And a crash generally takes like three to four seconds off your time, bare minimum. So yeah, pretty easy gold here if you are trying to get these with me. But hey, if you uh, see this video and you're the creator of the track, let me know for future tracks what you want to be called. On April 23rd, we have Tropical Archipelago by BE Blade Runner. Say that name five times fast. Uh, yeah, good luck with that one. Uh, just like kind of good luck seeing where you're driving on this track. I mean, you're trying to look ahead of where you're going, but everything is just so gray. It all blends in together. That's why you see me slow down so many times. I uh, just cannot see what the heck is in front of you. It's just gray on gray. But uh, overall, I mean, the track itself is just fine. I guess uh, speed tech track, even there, I just bonked the wall. Still gonna get gold here, so obviously a fairly easy gold here. But uh, again, the gray on gray for all that road made it very difficult to see where the heck you were supposed to be driving. On April 24th, we have Rothenburg by Sparkling W. This track is a tech track. It's also a pretty challenging one too. Uh, a lot of the turns kind of blind, especially on the exits of the drifts. I uh, just have no idea what's around the corner. You got to practice this one a lot. But even then, it's also challenging because yeah, everything just looks kind of exactly the same. You got all these buildings all have the same color and everything just throughout the entire track. It's just very challenging to kind of remember where each turn is and how long to take each turn because they all just really blend together here. Got a couple of dirt sections as well, like this one here is the last one. And then you got to jump to the finish as well. You got to get like perfectly inside of a circle at the end, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. But overall, the entirety of the track, just uh, a pretty challenging one. And on April 25th, we have Reckless by Rogue Dawn TM. I guess you could categorize this as a full speed track. Maybe a speed tech track would be more fitting, though you're not really drifting on your own. You got the grass sections that auto drift you. But anyway, uh, most of my time spent on this track was for this turn right here coming up. Uh, you got to go up to the left. It's so hard to see where you're supposed to go. There's so much junk there kind of obstructing your vision. And that's where, like I said, all my time on this one came from really just practicing that one section. Once I got that down, pretty much got through the rest of it perfectly fine. And here at the end, just choose whatever finish you're able to get to. For April 26, we have Viking Village by Legendary Item. Uh, this track is kind of a mixed bag. There's some good sections. There's some not so great sections. Like uh, this not so great section at the start here, you're coming down here so fast into this like 180 dirt turn, felt very strange. But then you got like these middle sections here. We got this boost, we got a nice wall ride, and then we got a bunch of grass sections coming up after this. That were actually pretty decent and smooth to drive and some even dirt sections mixed in before the grass sections that I forgot about. But yeah, the middle sections kind of good. Again, and then we got like some weird drifts here that didn't feel all that great and then another drift here like a 180 drift i don't know it, again it was just kind of a mixed bag on how i felt about this some good sections some bad sections 
Uh, but just overall, that makes it an all right track. On April 27th, we have Track Mania Legacy by Bren TM. And it gets an honorable mention. Uh, the track itself is decent. There are some very strange turns that I didn't care for. Plus, the blackness of the ground makes it hard to see what actual surface you're driving on. There is road and dirt mixed in with this one. Right here is dirt, but you can't really tell unless you're driving on it. But uh, one of my main issues was the bloom on the map. Like, I turned the bloom off in order to have this even be playable. I'll put a short little clip at the end of this track on how the bloom actually looks. But uh, in the, the, even then, it's just the beginning section of the track for that bloom that I'm going to show. The rest of the track is kind of a nightmare, especially here at the end. You got these bikes that you need to drive by, which you can hardly even see with the bloom on. But we'll keep this going here into the bloom. Be coming up in shortly here. And here we go. Right at the start, you can see all these poles, all this very bright blue stuff made the track kind of a nuisance to drive on april 28th we have a cume by hesto this track was decent um very challenging as well the end section kind of was not fantastic it was so easy to slide out and hit a rock that was placed but uh, other than that uh, the beginning part of the track was all all right again a, a pretty difficult one very narrow gaps to go through and a lot of spots very narrow roads to drive on as well uh but yeah i uh, had a decent time with this one but here getting out of this and to the right hand side without hitting that rock very difficult and then you got to get through to the finish for april 29th we finally have our first place track mixta via by arizel a uh, very very challenging track here kind of made me contemplate not putting this in the number one spot but it was by far the best made track especially visually as well the best made track uh but again just so difficult this turn right here very very difficult you need all the speed in the world to get up to this section so you can get around this corner with a lot of speed and pretty much need to do that in order to get this gold medal and uh it looks way easier than it actually is yeah i mean even the rest of the track is way harder than it looks so uh just be aware that this is probably the hardest track of the entire month here uh but overall definitely the best one and for the final track of the month on april 30th we have grave mind by ripfish and it gets the third place finish this month it's a tech heavy track with uh, pretty nice transitions between each spot even some nice magnetic sections as well which threw me off at the start but overall playing it more and more i thought they worked out extremely well for how they uh, were placed so just a very nice track here by ripfish And that's it for April. Overall, the month was fairly easy, and I even have stats to back it up. Been working long and hard to compile a bunch of stats for this series and finally have them. This month was my second fastest completion, taking about 177 minutes to complete, which equates to 5 minutes and 53 seconds spent per track. Well behind the first month, July 2020, but miles ahead of the hardest, December of 2020. Comparing my average gold time to the set gold time, you can see that August of 2020 was by far my best month, beating gold by an average of 2.558 seconds, which is about 5.46%. The worst month being February of 2021, only beating gold by roughly 0.718 per track, equaling about 1.54%. July of 2020 had the highest set gold time of 54.806, and again, February of 2021 comes in with the lowest at 46.652, which would explain why it had the lowest time save per average. And the final graph here showing the gap in average set time and my goal time is slowly going down every month. 
This could mean a few things. The tracks are getting harder, therefore I'm beating the gold time by less. And in addition to that, that the shorter the track is, the less time you have to save on the tracks. The starting month was fairly easy and generous with its time, so it's no surprise that the things are slowly moving towards the center. And I hope you enjoyed that little analysis. I plan on using the stats I've compiled moving forward in not only this series, but future content to show not only how I've progressed, but on how the tracks of the day have progressed. But I'll leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for the Tracks for May.